Hello, welcome to Raymond Castile's Basement of Horror. This is an addendum to the Anchor Hawking Universal Monsters glasses video that we did last week. Since I did that video, some new information has come to my attention, so I, I, since I can't go back and change that video, uh, I, mean, I would have to take it off YouTube and lose all the views and all that. I don't want to do that. So instead, I'm just posting this addendum because I want this to be on the record and, and, and available to the public. And I'll explain why. Uh, so in the last video, we talked about a series of glasses, promotional glasses, made by Anchor Hawking in the 1960s. These glasses had pictures of the Universal Monsters, Frankenstein, Wolfman, the Mummy, and the Creature from the Black Lagoon. They were distributed as promotional giveaways at gas stations in the 1960s. And as far as anyone knew, the commonly accepted date for those glasses was around 1962 or 63. So if you looked anywhere online, those are the dates you would find, 1962 or 63. And even books, printed material, talking about these glasses, use those dates, auctions and their catalogs, selling the glasses, use those dates. So it's been, those dates, 62, 63, have been the commonly accepted dates for those glasses for a long time. And if you tried to research the glasses, you wouldn't find any other date other than roughly 63, 63 more than 62. It, most people thought they were from 63, but there were some people who said, no, nah, they're 62. So in the video, I said, it's probably 63. After I did the video, and you'll remember in the video, we, we looked at a, an advertisement, a newspaper advertisement owned by Andrew Williams for a Wisconsin-based gas station called Wisco that gave away the monster glasses every Thursday in August of some unknown year. And just based on those dates, we determined, well, I determined in the video that it must have been 61, 67, or 72. Those are the only years that matched the dates in the advertisement. And I said in the video, it was probably 67. But that would put it much later than the commonly accepted year for these glasses. Uh, it could have been 72. I said that uh, they could have lingered around that long, but it was most likely 67. 61 was too early. 67 was the only year that really made sense. So after I made the video, and, and, and uh, after the video went live, uh, Jason Klecko alerted me to a series of Facebook posts by Gary Prang. And Gary Prang is a longtime monster kid, and he's very big on research. Uh, he's a regular at the Classic Horror Film Board, and I used to be a regular there myself, and Gary was always doing in-depth research on classic monster topics and finding information other people didn't find. And Gary uncovered some newspaper advertisements for the monster glasses. Now let me look at some notes here, just to be sure I know what I'm, I'm telling you the right thing. 
all of the ads that Gary found online, he used probably newspapers.com, I'm not sure, but if it wasn't that, it was a similar service, an online newspaper archive, a searchable archive. And he found advertisements for the Anchor Hawking Monster Glasses for uh, the Wesco gas station, but also Sitco gas station, and some stores that were not gas stations, just retail stores. But the important thing was that all of these ads were from 1967. There was nothing earlier or later. So that suggested that the glasses were introduced in 67. So when I found that out, I went to newspapers.com and I searched for Anchor Hawking glasses, Anchor Hawking monster glasses, or just monster glasses in general. And there were a lot of uh, results, but then I, I whittled it down to just the relevant ones that were referring to the Anchor Hawking universal monster glasses. And there were, still, there were several hits and they were all from 1967. So I found advertisements through newspapers.com for the Anchor Hockey Monster Glasses in February, April, and August of 1967. And these advertisements were for gas stations or stores in Wisconsin, Florida, Michigan, and Indiana. Besides Wisco in Wisconsin, there were ads for a store chain called Shoppers Fair. Shoppers Fair, and the advertisements for, were for Shoppers Fair locations in Indiana, Florida, and Michigan. I've never heard of Shoppers Fair before. I don't know if it's still around. If it was only from that era, I don't know. But it apparently it was a retail store, not a gas station. And it sold the monster glasses. So we have a, a variety of advertisements from 1967 from Wisco and Sitco gas stations and from the Shoppers Fair chain of stores in all these different states, Wisconsin, Florida, Michigan, Indiana. And there were no results from any other year before or after 1967. So if the monster glasses had been introduced in 62 or 63, as had commonly been assumed before this, surely there would have been some other advertisements or some mention before 1967. If, there, if, if the only result from 67 were just the, the uh, Wisco ad, like the one Andy has, then you might say, well, that's a fluke, that maybe there was some leftover stock in a warehouse and they got rid of it by giving it to this Wisco's chain or Wisco was, was sitting on it or got a deal on it or whatever. But it wasn't just Wisco, it was a number of other businesses in multiple states, not adjacent states, but states around the country. So that would tell me that there was a broad distribution to different gas stations and retail stores around the country, all in 67. Not just the fall of 67, like you might expect, like Halloween time, but February, April, so winter, spring, and fall, or late summer of 67. So that blows away the idea that these glasses were from the heyday of the monster craze in the early 60s. The monster craze started really with the Aurora Frankenstein in 1961 and it, it 
blew up over the next couple years. In 63, 63 to 66, roughly, those were the, the most active years for the 60s monster craze. And by 67, it was kind of declining. People were more into space stuff, like uh, Matt Mason and the Outer Spacemen, Star Trek, Lost in Space, all, all that kind of stuff. People were more into this romance of space in science fiction. Uh, movies like Planet of the Apes and uh, 2001 were in production. They hadn't been released yet, but they were in production in 67. Uh, I don't remember what year Barbarella came out, but that's around the same era. Um, so the, the culture was gearing toward science fiction in space in the late 60s and moving away from the more gothic horror. You had Dark Shadows on TV and that was sort of the uh, that kind of carried the flag for gothic horror into the 1970s. So after the space thing died away uh, one of the things that was still standing in 1971 was Dark Shadows and that helped I think uh, carry over this popularity of horror and monsters from the 60s into the 70s along with Famous Monsters magazine and the Aurora model kits. But by and large, the culture was shifting to sci-fi and space in the late 60s. Uh, and also spy stuff was still very popular. That was popular earlier, but it was still very popular going into the end of the decade. So these glasses, instead of coming from the heyday of the monster craze, they're really at the tail end of the 60s monster craze. So that's a little different. That's a, that puts a different spin on them. Gives them a little different context. So I thought it was important to make the, a video. I mean, I, I, I didn't have to, or I could have just put it into the description maybe of the old video but one of the reasons I thought it was important to come here and make a separate video was because I feel like a lot of this information is getting lost once upon a time you had books and magazines that you would look things up in you had um, forums like the classic horror film board like the Universal Monster Army like the HMA for masks and a number of other ones uh, where you could Google and you could find threads discussing these things. And there was a lot of information in those discussions that were kind of archived in those discussions. So between the printed material and the online forums, there was a good body of knowledge out there that you could access. Now, when I was trying to find this information about the glasses, I mean, I knew that the common wisdom was that they were from the early 60s, early to mid, you know, 62, 63. But I wanted to be sure, so I did a fair amount of Googling, and I found several references to the glasses, and they all said the same thing. Most references said 63, a few said 62. So... That's what I thought, that's what, I'd, I, what I had always heard. So that reinforced what I already knew, I mean, the, the, the knowledge I thought I had. And so this brings to light, uh, one of the reasons I, I do this program is that when a lot of this discussion switched over to social media, because, as I said, these posts by Gary Prang, I don't know if I indicated they were, they were on Facebook. They were not on the Classic Horror Film Board. And most social media doesn't come up in a Google search. And I think we're losing some of this continuity of knowledge that we had 10, 20, 30 years ago when this information, when people researched this stuff, they would post, post, they would publish the information in a book or a magazine article 
or maybe an auction catalog, or maybe an advertisement in a printed publication like Toy Shop, or they would start a discussion on a, an internet forum that would be searchable. So if you went to Google, or back in the day, web crawler, or Yahoo, Netscape, I, that was the name of it, wasn't it? That's in my, I think that was it, right? Netscape, that was a browser way back in the good old days. Um, or today, Google. These discussions would come up. And now they don't. So I was surprised I hadn't seen those posts from Gary. Uh, and I realized that if Jason hadn't brought them to my attention, I still wouldn't know about it. And a lot of people trying to find information about these glasses, they, of course, would never see those posts. And they would find my video. And that might, that, that the video I, may, I made, who, who's to say in a year or two, whatever, that might become the go-to source of information for anyone looking for information on these glasses, anyone researching it. That might be, end up being the, the the number one source that everyone finds and, and, and quotes from. So I, I want it, so I, instead of this update getting lost, like putting in a description or something where people might not read it, I thought by doing a new video that would also come up in search engine results and that would get more notice so that a year or a few years from now, if someone's searching for information on these glasses, they'll find not only the previous video, they'll find this video as well, this addendum, and be able to add that to their research. And I think it's important that something get on record and not get lost in the ether because I think we are losing a lot a lot of information. Uh, if somebody said something in a Facebook post once upon a time three years ago, does it even matter? So maybe a few people read it and they have like a vague memory. Well, I thought I saw in a Facebook post once upon a time someone said something. That That's not adding to a body of knowledge. That's just, that just vanishes as soon as it's posted and, and memory fades and a couple years later no one can even find it afterward. So I think it's important to have a, a, a growing body of knowledge that's accessible. Like these newspaper advertisements, they're in an archive. You can search it, you can find these newspaper ads, these 1960s ads. And I think that's important that we build on this body of knowledge and that be accessible and findable so that people who want information on these things, what are they going to do? They're going to use a search engine. Today, Google, tomorrow, maybe it's something else, but they'll use some kind of a search engine. And, you know, they're not going to go to a library, look through a card catalog to find information on these classes. They're going to go online and they're going to use a search engine. And whatever it comes up, that's going to inform them about these glasses or whatever other toys we talk about on the show. So hopefully they'll find this video and the other video I did and there, there might eventually be more definitive sources of information about the glasses out there somewhere. But from what I've seen, these two videos are probably it for now. I'd I, I don't know what I would point to that would be a better source of information about these glasses. The main video that I did and now this bonus video, this added information. So that's why I thought it was important to do a, com a whole other video so that when people are looking for information on these things in the future, they will find it. It won't get lost. That's 
all I have to say about that. So thanks for watching and we'll have a, a new episode of Basement of Horror very soon. By the time you see this, I'm sure it'll be uh, just a couple days away. But I think I will upload this video before the next full episode. But another full episode is on the way very soon. So thanks again. And Basement of Horror will return. <laughs>